Our hearts and minds clear. <laughs> Woo! Boogie and boogie and boogie and. All right, I see us coming in. Come on in. Hi, Nisimo. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, Ebony. Natalia. Hi, Shania. Colleen. Barbie. Romanita. Hi, Ebony. Maria. Beverly. Katrina. Hi, Leah. That's right, D. Davis. She's saying hello. And not just to me. She's saying hello to the delegates. Okay. Don't know if I'm going to need a plug, but I don't know where a plug is. So we'll work it out. Woo, I'm so excited. Oh, great. Shania and Gwen. Okay, now I know if that name really is who you are. That's right. We have people on um, uh, Periscope saying hello to the folks on um, Facebook. I see Nicola. Nicole saying hi to Pastor D. I had some good stuff that I printed. But I had to travel today, so I'm in a different location coming to you live. And I wanted to have all my information. Hello, Destiny. Hello, Anya. Rakea. Dajanae. Sylvia. Tasha. L. Elaine. Paulette. Colleen. Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Natasha. Come on down. Let's go. I thought I had two testimonies. Come on, roll call. Roll call. <laughs> Diddy Marissa, beautiful. I'm playing with my little brother, Call of Duty. Oh, Lord. All right, Destin, you could have kept that to yourself. My sweet niece. Hello, Harriet. Manuel, Bianca, good evening to you as well, Harriet, Keisha, Manny, Natasha, roll call, come on, hey Keisha, oh, <laughs> you received my correction before it came a rebuke, huh, hmm, let me get comfortable in this house tonight, woo, yes, I sense it. Do you sense it? Do you sense it? Do you sense it? Woo! Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Now you want to know what's the word tonight as you play Call of Duty, huh, my little niece? I want to get this on the right side so that I can... Read the testimonies. I do have a couple that I like to share. I've been driving all day and I just got situated at a different location. So I'm trying to get situated here because um, we just got back from grabbing a bite to eat and all that good stuff. Can everyone see me clearly? You can see me okay? Ah. Throwing myself around a bit, just trying to get comfortable. I don't know any other way to adjust things, so we're going to keep it like this. Mm, yeah, we'll, we'll work with it like this. We're good. Good evening. Who has the best seat in the house? Come on. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me see you. Who has the best seat in the house? Hello, Terrell. Hey, Shannon. Close the door a little bit. Woo! Yes. Hello, Carol. She's saying hello, Facebook family. Hello, Lyd Pastor Lydia. Trish, detox and on the go. She's heading home. Traveling mercies. Tarina. Good pick. Okay, good. Best seat in the house. Best seat in the house. Come on. Who has it? Man, I'm fired up about this healing. Did you know that? Did you know that you were healed? Do you know that you have been going through such a healing emotionally? 
Do you know that after last night, healing has hit you in a very good way, but in a very strong way? Woo! Best seat in the house in California. Welcome, Magdalia. Come on, CW. Rochelle. Regina Ross. Come on. Come on in where the table is spread. Woo! I'm ready to take everything off. No glasses, no earrings, no jewelry. T-shirt and jeans kind of evening. Crystal, Jasmine. Hey, Ellie Lane. Yes, yes, indeed. Healing, 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 healing. My, 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 my. Supernatural. Heal the soul, heal the body. That's right. People are in here saying hello to the delegates. Me familia. All right, it's eight minutes after. I hope everyone gets in here. Periscope seems to be a little slow. I thank you for the, the hearts. I see the hearts coming in. God bless you for the hearts. Hey, Favre. I see the hearts coming up on Periscope. It looks like a fire in an altar, in a fireplace. You better work it out. Elder Denise. Oh, I will. Let me read a testimony. I printed some testimonies and I grabbed them off the printer when I hit the road, but we all know how that goes. But I like to encourage all of us on the journey that we're on. So I got um, two more U marks in the mail. I received two prior and I received two more. I got I got two from, from delegates. I got two from... Um, Pastor Lydia and from, no, I mentioned her already, from Ebony and from Misha. Ebony and Misha sent me you marks. I went to my church office today just to grab some things to hit the road and I had two you marks waiting for me and they blessed me. Isn't that beautiful? Best seat in the house. I know that's right. Oh, look at everybody saying hello to each other. It makes my heart warm. All right, listen, testimony time. Yes, that's right, Sylvia, testimony time. After last night's message, I enjoyed an earlier message presented by someone else entitled, Worry About Nothing, Pray About Everything. I know I can't do it justice, so if you have the time, I know you will be blessed by hearing this word of God. What I want to say is thank you for the study we have embarked on. As with any message, some parts are for you and some parts are meant to be saved to bring forth and share at a later date. You hear that? She didn't say anything about that old religious mantra that we have. Uh, eat the fish and spit the bones out. Come on. The true kingdom. If we was in church, I'd say true apostolic people. There's no bones to spit out. If their bones learn how to eat them. Nothing should be spit out when it comes to the true word of God. The pure, true word of God. And she said it right. Some things are for you now. Some things you're going to embark on further study. Or you have to wait for time to shift to meet up to you with the word that has come forth to you. I love this. So thank you for the study we have embarked on. As with any message, some parts are for me and some other parts are meant to be saved to bring forth and share at a later date. Well, last night... When the message pointed to the center of our life being God, I knew I would never approach fear the same way because I am human. I will experience those feelings known as fear or worry or anxiety, but they will not take root in my soul because of the one who lives there. Come on. Thank you, Anya, for sharing. Because of the one who lives there, God, I thank you for the relationship that you and I have developed. That's what this, this writer is saying, that you and I have developed over these 61 years. You see, last night we were talking about what? We had 15 and 16-year-olds on. We have a 61-year-old on and given testimony. God has always been there from the moment he breathed life into me. But I have, over time, moved closer through reading of the word I study the Bible and application of life through its very bumpy roads. But she is thanking God for this study that she has embarked on. 
and she is applying what she can to her life right now and throwing nothing out. She said last night the message pointed that she had fear because she did not have God at the center. She had herself at the center and that's why she was experiencing an abundance of fear instead of an abundance of faith. So she's given God the glory and she's thanking us for coming together for these uh, 20 days at this point so that fear will not take root in her soul because of the one who lives there. Come on, testimony. That's right, Barbie. Hey, Joseph. All right. All right, come on. Talk to me. There's one more I want to read. I wish I had time to find the other one that I printed. All right, one more testimony. Testimonies are important. Do you feel encouraged? Do you feel like you're not alone? You're not the only one feeling yucky or feeling like your life has just been turned upside down? Come on. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. This one is so deep. This one I just peeked at five minutes before coming on here. Hello, LaVonda, Chevelle, Belinda, Tarina. I'm missing my babies tonight. Priscilla, Regina, Fave. Come on. Cindy praying for you. Rebuke that freezing. Listen to our testimony. I'm building my library. Today, I've listened to Detox One. Prayer in the Holy Spirit. She's on my... um iTunes and Podbean account. Prayer in the Holy Spirit. And now I'm listening to Resolving Conflict. Apostle? See, when they call me that, they know me outside of this. Because if you notice, I don't refer to myself to anyone except Suzanne Howard. I don't refer to myself as anyone besides your soul detox delegate who is teaching you, relaying information to you, bringing revelation to you with a prophetic anointing on it so that I can delegate you with the supernatural power to teach how to be delivered from our soul issues. So this person knows me outside of this in some form. Apostle, you are blessing my very soul. I told my pastor all about this journey with you, and he is pleased. That's a plus, plus, plus. plus. Give your pastor a you mark. That's a pastor who's keeping it real. When you have a moment, I would like to enlighten, I would like you to enlighten me on how to scripturally get my virginity back. Did y'all hear that? How to scripturally get my virginity back. What is she talking about? I want to remain pure for God until I am ready to be the princess that you referred to in one of your sessions who wants a knight in shining armor but not even a princess herself. The Lord has blessed me to become more aware of my sinful flesh and I thank him I don't partake on or enjoy the sin of my flesh any longer. This one's going to make me weep. Because if I am really honest, there was a time when I did. Oh, thank you, Father. Ray. Just, br just bring, just being real with you. I desire to go higher. It's time. Will you help me? Come on. Come on, somebody. Now, that's a testimony. She wants to turn back some of her ways. Oh, this is so good. This is why I had the quote tonight. You know how I always quote someone or scripture? This, this woman right here wants to turn back and go back to a place of purity so she can attract what's actually in her and not continue to attract what's been her old ways. That is good. Come on, Beverly. Come on. Come on, Fave. That is definitely a testimony. If I say so myself. I remember when that became my testimony. When I decided. And I was watching at that time. I was watching um, Juanita Bynum. Uh, no More Sheets. And that's when I decided. Purity with God. No one taught on this. Well, how do you do it as a single woman? Because we always have married people preaching to us. And man, when I got a hold of that. My life changed forever. I went from salvation to conversion. See, often we don't go from salvation to conversion. We get saved, we confess Him, we hear a really good message, we leave the altar, and we wait the rest of our days to hear another really good message that uh, affects our, our uh, unrepentant lifestyles or our unknowledged ways of how we are living. And this woman of God took me through, in, through everything, from 
sexual promiscuity, male on male, from masturbation. She talked about it. And as she talked about it, I took notes. Let me tell you something that's really powerful here. And I'm only going this way because of the testimony that came forth from this, this awesome woman that shared this. I never met this preacher that I'm talking about. I never met this mentor. I never personally met, never put my hand in her hand, never hugged her, never any of that. But every time she released something, I bought it. Every time she was on TV, I would watch it or record it. Every time she had a conference and she had a six series conference, I remember it would cost $175 for a six VHS. There were VHSs then, dating myself. I would buy it. Why? Because I was committed to my change. I was committed to my transformation. And sometimes it just costs money to be committed to something. And it cost me to get where I am today. It took obedience. It took discipline. It took detoxing my soul. It took trusting God to leave people, places, and things alone. It took me investing and someone else's ministry so that I could be poured into instead of just being poured on. Come on, how many of y'all been poured on so much the oil and stained your clothes? You've been poured on so much, but we need to be poured into. I was poured into and I invested in her ministry. This ain't a segue. No one's going to come down your aisle right now with a tithes and offering bucket. This ain't the segue. What am I telling you? Find someone who's ministering to where you are at and to where you want to go. Not someone who keeps recycling messages because those were popular and they got the most claps and the most hand claps for it and the most shouts in the church. Don't, don't stick with that. They have to know where you are, but they have to preach a message where you're going. When God dealt with Moses and when God dealt with Israel, I'm sorry we're going to church for a few minutes here. When God dealt with Moses and God dealt with Israel, he told them, I need you to come out of Egypt. And they didn't say, whoa, 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 we're going to follow you. No. And you're going to the promised land. God does not uproot you from a place unless he gives you direction to where you're going. Simple. So I'm leaving the church. I'm leaving this. I'm leaving that. But you don't know where you're going. That's not God. That's your emotion. You are acting out of emotion. You're moving hastily. You're moving without the wind in your sails. You're moving without checking the gas in your gas tank. You cannot make changes just because you are emotionally fed up. You are emotionally tired. You are emotionally frustrated. You cannot make changes out of emotion. You have to have clear direction. If you're a follower of Christ, you need to have correction and, and, and direction from the Holy Spirit where you're going. If you're not, you need to be writing your vision and making it plan. This is where I plan on going. These are the steps to get there. And every single day, so we've already moved into my teaching on purpose. Every single day, you need to check and make sure that everything you do in your life, or at least one thing you do in your life that particular day, every single day, that it is a step towards purpose. You should not be on another ladder, up another direction, if that's not heading towards your purpose. If you have a direction that you want to go, don't be in nobody else's house. Don't be in anybody else's business. Don't be in anybody else's situation. Make sure that every single day of your life, you are making a step towards your purpose. And that's whatever you want to do and whatever you want to be. That's on you. Completely on you. But this woman here is, is, is signed up because she wants more information. I see y'all sharing. Thank you. She wants more information. She wants to go. She found someone. Who's teaching relevant information and not just relevant, but has direction. If I was in church, I'd say a prophetic timeline, a direction and a timeline on how we're going to get there and when we're going to get there. Maybe not what it's going to look like every single day, but I know that this is a goal towards a step that I have to that I that I have planned to make for my life. Oh, come on. I'm glad I'm speaking to you. And that's why you should have a vision board. And you look at that vision board and you make sure every single day that something that you've done in that day is attributing to where you plan on ending up. I want to thank you now. I see um, Eugenia Green. She just signed into Podbean. P-O-D-B-E-A-N. Podbean. It's also the same on iTunes. And she just subscribed on there. So she will always be getting updates. She will get, when I speak affirmations and release them, her phone will be notified immediately or her laptop, her devices will be notified immediately that there is a message, that there is word, that maybe there's some MP3 downloads and she's already subscribed to it. Why? Because she's making the steps necessary that are going to be the steps to her ladder towards destiny. 
She knows that something is relevant here. It's piqued her curiosity. She stayed on enough now, along with Ellie Lane, who signed up yesterday. She's uh, found out that this is not only relevant, but she sees the direction in which she wants to go. This other woman whose testimony I just read was completely amazing. She wants to build a library. I just went in and looked, and I can't tell you how many that she's already signed into. She's downloading them. Why? Because she knows that this thing needs to become a habit in her life. Needs to become a habit in her life. And what's a habit? 21 days or something like that? It needs to become a habit in her life. So she wants to hear and hear and hear. Come on for those Bible believers by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And it's really just not twice. It's by the hearing and the hearing. Repetition. It means repetition. It doesn't mean two times. It means repetition. It's very important. So don't be afraid. Don't worry about what people have to say about anything. Just do what you need to do. Do it for you for once. So I want to thank those who have sent in and shared testimonies. I'm telling you, I am completely encouraged. I also want to make a, a statement that we have um, an Elder Greg Duhart and his wife is on here as well. And he has had surgery. And she said that the recovery process has been tough on both of them. You know, the sometimes not just the um, the sick patient is the one that's going through. Sometimes the caretakers get taken out and they end up getting sick themselves after taking care of a sick person. Mm, we can't go there tonight. But just lift them up tonight. Very good, Gilda. We can talk about that as well. But lift them up tonight. You see um, Elder Greg, and, and I don't know if she has Elder Denise or just Denise Duhart, but they're on here. If you want to take a moment, just send their names up on the screen with prayers or with hearts or something. Let them know that we're praying for them because we're a family. Remember last night I talked about going to church? This is church. I'm not telling you not to go to your church. That is not my assignment in your life. I'm not telling you where to go to church. I'm not telling you to not go to church. But it doesn't mean that we haven't been in church revival for these last 20 nights. Every single night for an hour. That's right. Come on. I see it. Praying for the do hearts. Very good, Nisi. Come on. Speedy recovery. Supernatural recovery for him. That's right. Come on. Praying. Yes, yes, yes. Show the love. Show the love. They're good people. They're good people on top of it. Not just because he needs the prayer. They're also good people. Okay, I think I might have found the other testimony. Yeah. You ready for one more? Can we take one more? Very good. Look at the love. Ah, I love this. Touched my heart. All right, another testimony while y'all sending it up. That's right. Thank you. Special 728, if I can see that correctly, with glasses on. Um, here's another testimony. Apostle, exclamation point. Apostle, exclamation point. Apostle, exclamation point. That's how this person started out. This teaching tonight, and this was last night, and I wasn't sure how it was ministering. I wasn't sure how it was affecting you. If it was seed being planted in soil ground, I was... I wasn't too sure on it last night, but these testimonies help to know that we are not only relevant, but we are heading in the right direction. This teaching tonight, this knowledge is like a shock to my system. I feel like I've been living in neutral for some time now, and I thank God for these teachings. Thank you, Beverly Ann. She said these teachings were good on last night. Now, I'm just trying to apply so I can be truly free and changed. I desperately need this change. Thank you for pressing every night. Writer, if you are on here tonight, thank you. Thank you so very much. I, I thank God for you. I will add you in my prayers. Um, you've encouraged me and I just thank you for it immensely. I just completely thank you for even taking the time and to write that in. Um, and this is one more that I have. Um, some some of you, oh, okay, this right here, this was posted on Facebook, so I'm reading a post. Some of you have a video in your inbox. I've sent it to invite you along a journey with me. 30-day soul detox. Apostle Suzanne Howard has been leading me to God. Wow, do you hear this? And I didn't make this a religious platform. I didn't get on here with the shum da 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 and I didn't get in here with the oil, or I didn't get in here and, and waving my little ball with the smoke 
it's incense coming out of it. I came out here real relevant because what's in me should show if he's really there. It should show without me even saying his name. And not that I will ever be ashamed of saying his name, but I want this platform to be open for everyone. I didn't want anyone to feel castrated or offended. Why? Because that's the vision he gave me. Someone else may be the one that carries the banner and the signs and the bullhorn. And I will support him every step of the way. But that's not how he told me to reach his people these 30 days. He did not tell me to do it that way. So that's why. I know the word. I'm not afraid or ashamed of his word. So let's keep it real together. Here we go. I sent an invite to you, uh, um, to you along to join this journey along with me on a 30-day soul detox. Apostle Suzanne Howard has been leading me to God. Now I see how I went to the left. Because not only am I helping her with her soul, but she said that these teachings are leading her to God. Being used as a vessel to help clean out toxic thoughts. I didn't even realize that I kept suppressed for so long. Thank you, God. I've been growing so much closer to God, and that's what I want for all of your lives as well. I started late, day eight, I believe, but it's never too late. And we say this every night, you're never late. Once we finish on the 31st, we will do a weekly recap. You see how she's saying we? We will do a, re a weekly recap of each topic once a week for 30 weeks. So you can join us weekly as we dive deeper. I challenge y'all to grow in the Lord. I love you so much. And she put this on her post to all her friends that she sent the video into. Isn't that beautiful? That's right. We're never late because we have replay. <laughs> Never late. I also want to thank, who was this? I already thanked her last night, Marsha. So how, Marcia? No, it's Marsha. So how are you? How's everyone doing today? Did you get through last night okay? Did you find out that I was telling you the truth, that he really wasn't at the center where you thought he was? Did you find out another layer of, I don't know what I don't know about myself? You thought you were so deep. Matter of fact, people who are not deep at all told you you were too deep. And you bought into their toxic lie because they didn't like at the level you were that was excluding them. Maybe relation, remember relational jealousy, marital jealousy. It's really not about the jealousy. It's the fact that they're afraid that they're losing you or that they're losing the change or the type of relationship that they've had with you. So it comes across to us as jealousy. So some of these people fall in that category. And they felt that they were losing you. Or that the relationship was going to change. So they started to attack you. Your church. Your leader. Your faith. They started moving in on your ground. And they was just shooting all the cross. And you didn't understand. Because they supported you. And all the other things that you did. That didn't turn out so well. They supported you in your overspending. They supported you in your partying. They supported you in your drunkenness. You hung over the next day. They supported you when you left your kids home for uh, alone for hours because you wanted to hang out. They supported you when you were in all kind of activities that could have took your life, your soul, your mind, your, um, your purity, could have given you some sort of disease. Come on. They supported you in that. But now you come to Christ. You come to church. You come on here maybe for some um, further education of yourself. Furthering the education of yourself. And now they don't support you and you didn't understand why. So you bought into the lie that you was too deep. But on last night. Come on. We in church for a second. Somebody say on last night. We found out that we weren't really deep at all. One, we found out that we really didn't know what we didn't know about ourselves and we found out that we would not have all of these fears if the universe if Christ if the presence of the Holy Spirit was really at the center of all we do interesting replay with the pages of journal notes I know that's right because I'm going fast tonight I know I'm flowing so tonight is just gonna be a all ears night um, you may have to close your eyes for a moment and focus replay to take your notes but this is what I got today that I really want to share with you. I want to share with you today that if you are constantly worried, that is a, uh, if I was in church, I would say a spirit of fear. Um, constant worry is a lack of faith in whatever you have faith in. 
It is living in a fear that is causing you to be toxic because worry and fear has already approached you. It's already at your door. It's already knocking. And this is one of the problems. You worry about particular things and uh, not pleasing God, not fulfilling your duty before you leave, your marriage, your friendships, your children, sickness, all these things that we flood the screens up with on last night and uh, in the night before that, I believe. But let me ask you about this. Have you really seriously taken the time to pray about these things that you're worrying about? Talk to your, your higher being or, you know, speak the words that are of power and of authority. Have you done any of that? Usually, fear binds us so much that it keeps our mouth shut. Some of us have lost our voice to even speak with the knowledge and the faith that we have because fear has bound our tongue. Isn't that deep? I knew this was going to try to happen to me. Um, but what we end up doing is we keep worrying about it and our actions are continually communicating that I am taking care of myself because I moved from faith to fear. That's what it ends up communicating to us. I'm going to have to slide over here, people of God. I told those who logged on earlier with me that I had to travel today. And so I'm in a whole different location and I don't know where the outlets and the plugs are and all that wonderful stuff. So we're going to move a little bit. Don't get car sick on me so that I can plug in my gadgets here. Okay, let me see. Let me find you again. All right. Sorry for this delay. I am so excited because I heard a revelation today. And a revelation that I heard today was that you are healed. <laughs> that you are healed. Isn't that amazing? Whatever the issue is, you're healed. <laughs> and no one can take the healing from you. Why? Because the healing came when you gave up fear. It's an automatic deposit to your soul account. I'm getting it together, and now you're going to be able to hear me better. And that's a journal moment. That's something I need you to journal in your notes. I am healed and it was automatically deposited into my soul account. Who is this? I missed you. Sorry. Yep. Come on, Caritha. Come on, Shania. Come on, Regina. You are healed and it was automatically deposited into your soul account. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no changes that you need to make. You're healed automatically. <laughs> Woo! Automatic transfer. Listen, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to make sure we kill this fear and we're going to move into our season of faith and we are actually going to see true healing. True, true healing. And it will not be based on anything that we've done or said outside of releasing this fear. Very good. And you know what helps to release fear and to get over fear? Testimonies. That's why I set y'all up tonight for a testimony. All right. I think I got there now. Listen. So why do we do it? Why do we fear? Because we're afraid to trust God. The person who is at the helm of the universe. We are afraid to trust God with every area and every hour of our lives. Do you hear me? Welcome, Cynthia Bastiani. We fear and struggle giving it up because we are afraid to trust God with every area and every hour of our lives. That is right. Come on. An automatic deposit into your soul account. And can anybody do anything about it? Because anticipating the worst, listen, this is good stuff right here. Because anticipating the worst, did I just lose my page? Lord have mercy. See what happened when you have to make changes? But it didn't matter to me because uh, I was sticking with this. I didn't care where I had to end up at. 
as long as there was internet, I said I was going to be on and live, and I didn't care about anything. And I'm keeping my word. I am on and I am live. I'm, I'm like the Vince Stoner I was the other night. I'm sitting Indian style, but I'm on and I'm live. And I found me a spa. Listen, so why do we do it? Because we're afraid to trust God with every area and every hour of our lives. Because anticipating the worst, come on, this is good. Because anticipating the worst allows us to believe we have some power or control. Remember we talked about people who have a fear of losing control? A fear of losing control? This is a major healing message for you on tonight. Because you, you, the way your personality works, you have convinced yourself that you have some power and control. So with that, you have to worry a little bit because you are in control. So did I think about this today? Did I make decisions for this today? That, how about this? Did I wake up the sun today? Did I wake up the moon today? Did I get the universe up on time? Did I make sure that the high tide came and the low tide came? Did I make sure, sure that the waters approached the beach and knew when to stop? You know, you, you, you became God. So now you have to think of all the things that God instituted from the beginning. Because you put yourself in his place. So when you put yourself in his place, now you have to worry about all the things of the universe. Oh, I forgot. I didn't, I didn't get here on time. So I forgot to make the sun go down and make the stars come up and have the moon shine bright. You know, you took over a powerful place in your life that does not belong to you. And by doing that, you have taken on responsibilities that you should be enjoying life and letting the matters of the universe be held by the creator of the universe. Am I making sense to you? You've stepped into a place that you don't have control over. So now what do you have to do? You have to worry about every single thing that goes on in your life. But instead of giving up every hour and every area of your life, you don't do it. Why? Why don't we do it? Because anticipating the worst. Because anticipating the worst. No, oh, somebody's got it written down. Because anticipating the worst allows us to believe we have some sort of power or control and we need to feel that way come on come on oh <laughs> another weight you had to lift you need to feel like you have power and control some of us have become power and control junkies why? Because somewhere in our lives, probably dating back to our childhood, somebody took our power from us. Somebody made us feel or made us believe that we do not have control over anything in our lives. So as we grew to adults, we have made up our minds that we are going to have control and power over everything we can. And what we can't control and what we do not have power of, we don't want anything to do with it. So we're going to say that God told me not to have you in my life. We're going to say that the Lord had me leave that job and be broke, lose my house, lose my car, go bankrupt. God had me do all that because I didn't have power and control because you lost it somewhere in your life. And instead of moving forward from that place, identifying it, setting your road map up, map up you decide I'm going to go back and I'm going to gain all the power and control of anything in my life. Okay, somebody's with me. And now you live with a job that's only made for the creator of heaven and earth. You can't keep up with what's going on in your life. We won't be surprised when we think this way. We won't be surprised when something terrible happens because we have already imagined it and prepared ourselves for the worst. Good, Adoria. Good. We're not surprised when something terrible happens. We're like, oh, I knew it. Oh, every day. Oh, always happening to me. I knew something was going to happen. This is always, this is never a surprise. Of course it's not. Why? Because you have already imagined the worst and prepared yourself for it. Even though you try to act like you put on a good front, you knew that something wasn't going to go right. Why? Because you have conditioned your mind for the worst. Why? Because you believe you are in control of it. And when you haven't taken the time to control something, you know that it's going to be out of order. Come on, Tarina. So how do we find a way out? 
Who's going to ask me? How do we find a way out? I'm waiting, Periscope. Periscope always writing. I believe y'all be writing. Do y'all be writing? Absolutely. Yep. Yep. See how much when you want to be in control? Very good. Thank you, Montre. How do we find our way out? Somebody said to me today, I'm working really hard at being brutally honest with myself. And I'm so glad to hear the parroting back, the repetition of the words that we are speaking on this 30 days of soul detox, because it is very important. Do not form your own language. Pick up the language of what's being taught to you. You're a delegate. A delegate. So authority and control has been given to you to do it a particular way. So yes, being brutally honest with yourself is key. But how do we find a way out of this? We have to face our greatest fears in order to reach our greatest potential. I'm going to give you a minute to write it down because I know you want to put it on the screen and I know you want to go ahead and write it in your journal because this is a journal moment. Go ahead, CW. Control is out of control. Woo, that should be a good chapter title for this one. That's right, Diane. Come on, Tamara. How do we find our way out? We have to face our greatest fears. <laughs> In order to reach our greatest potential. Go ahead, Nisi. Tonight, this is what we're doing. We're facing our greatest fears in order to reach our greatest potential. Belinda sounds like she got her hands on her hips. I am a detox delegate. And I know that's right. Come on, Maria. Come on, virtuous love. How was date night? Face it. Face it. Face it. Face it. Dead on. And in order to reach our greatest potential. How many of y'all want to reach your greatest potential? Don't you want to have your mind blown about you? Movies can blow your mind. Gifts that people give you can blow your mind. Um, some of the greatest landmarks in the world. I went to Niagara Falls for the first time last year in May. And the falls and the fact that the water could be felt so far away and the ground was just, woo, my God. It was, it was so exciting and exhilarating and overwhelming and all those good thoughts. Wouldn't you like to be that blown away about yourself? That's another place we could have a conference, Niagara Falls. I'm ready to go, go, go. I don't know if y'all with me today. I think I've been in the car too long. Four hours must have been too long. Because I am turned up, as y'all say. Come on. I have to face my greatest fears. And if you're, yourself asks you why, because I need to reach my greatest potential. I want to blow my own mind. I want to wake up excited about me. I want people to come to me and say, wow, what has happened in your life? What has changed in your life? And it doesn't have to be a fearful thing for you because you're afraid you're going to go backwards and, and lose the testimony or lose the new reputation that you've gained with them. No, when you face your greatest fears, you reach your greatest potential. Yes, Marissa. That's right, Natasha. Come on, Favre. Very good. Very good. Virtuous love. Come on, Doja. Come on. When you are experienced, and I'm going to curve this way because this is how we're going to end tonight on healing. When you are experiencing sickness in your body, I want you all to start taking a moment and see if you can trace it back to any current fear running through your life. Fear. But you're going to have to recognize fear by more than a scary thing because fear is not scary. Fear is another level of scary. It's another level of being afraid. It's another level of being scared. Fear is when it's controlling your life and not the moment. You can be scared for a moment. You can be afraid for a moment. Ooh, something scared you. You were shaking. You were afraid. But fear is when it interferes with your day, your life. It makes changes in you. Ooh, go ahead. Healing took place last night, Charles Craig says. So you're someone on here tonight may be experiencing numbness in their body. It's coming and going. It's not constant. Maybe it's fleeting numbness. 
Someone else on here has experienced a lot of nausea. You're nauseous a lot. A lot of headaches. How about those neck pains that come from stress? Who am I talking to? Someone on here is just nearly in constant pain. Constant pain. Throughout your body. Different places, different times. But it's every day. There's some pain. Someone else on here is weak pretty much all of the time. Mm-hmm. Come on, they're coming up. Yep, somebody says it's me. Somebody says numbness. Periscope is saying me. Last night. Yep, come on. And you know why you have this? You know what the root of this is? And I'm going to call it out. It's fear. And last night, if it troubled you a little bit, you know why it troubled you last night? Because fear was being hit at the root. We were facing the fear and we were at the brink of reaching your greatest potential. And your soul automatically put up them guards, them soldiers and said, no, 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 don't mess with, don't mess with that. We don't want to deal with that. It's too much. I want to stay in the darkness about this thing. But the more we tugged and the more we pulled, your body had no choice but to line up because that's the purpose of the soul. You can visit <coughs> doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor. You can spend hundreds of dollars on tests. But I'm telling you, no one's going to be able to diagnose you. They will not be able to prognose you. And even worse, no one in your world, your life, is going to be able to offer you any simple suggestions. You know why? Because something greater is happening in your life. Somebody saying chronic numbness. Troubled her a lot last night. Constant aches and pain. What if I told you that the problem to this physical ailment that you're having is coming from fear. Maybe you didn't feel any fear yesterday or maybe you haven't felt, felt fear this month, but it doesn't mean fear isn't active in your life. How do you know it's active in your life? Through the sickness, through the, the ailments that I just named that are going on in your body. Mm -hmm. Heart palpitations, a major one. Sleeplessness. I was just dealing with my son on that. He was telling me how he's sleeping an hour and a half and he's up. We begin to talk about his soul for four hours in the car today. And, and a lot of this, I would say the majority of this, is what's in his soul. And he's aware of it. So I expect an immediate turnaround now. Wow, Shannon. Wow. Large medical bills with people telling me it was all stress. Got to release the fear. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, I'm turning to the Bible, stay with me. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Stomach issues is major, rooted in fear. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You have to realize tonight, right now, that I've been living in fear and not living by faith. And definitely not the kind of faith that pleases God. Look at this. There's no way we could end these 30 days with y'all telling me all these issues you got going on in here. We up here celebrating and sharing testimonies and we got numbness, complete body pain, nausea, headaches. Some of y'all vision is going off. There's no way we can end these 30 days and have that kind of victory. That's not the kind of victory I'm coming after. That's not the victory that I'm submitted and committed to these 30 days. We need Hebrews 11 and 6. We need the kind of faith that pleases God. Oh my God, we're going to go another level tonight. We found out last night that God wasn't even at the center of us. Like we thought he was. <laughs> Let's just be honest, okay? That was really pastoral. Let me just be really nice to let you know. He wasn't at the center. Still love me? That's right, Susie. Come on, you're not the only one, sweetheart. You are not the only one. That's why you're on here tonight. But you have to learn tonight, tonight, tonight. And listen, I don't have to lay hands on you. I don't have to pour more oil on you. Words have power and deliverance and healing. God works through dimensions and distance and time and seasons. Right now, healing is being spoken to you because truth sets you free. Truth sets you free. Receive this truth right now wherever you are. Wherever you are, lift your hands and receive this truth right now. 
I receive Hebrews 11 and 6. It doesn't even matter if I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to trust what's being spoken over me right now because people spoke a lot of scriptures over me when I wasn't a believer. And their faith helped me to gain faith. That caused me the healing type of faith that I needed in my life. I used to have migraines. Healed. I barely get headaches anymore. Hands up. Come on. Right now, I speak and release this over your life. Hebrews 11 and 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I release to you by these words of life, these words of truth, these words of prophetic power into your life tonight. You are healed by your faith. Your faith has been upgraded. Your faith has been amplified by this truth that you've been receiving for 20 days. And no person, no demon, no spirit, no universe, no nothing is going to take away this victory that you've gained for 20 days that has caused you to triumph. Baby, you have triumphed up to this 20th day. This faith is yours. Your healing is yours. No hocus pocus. Truth. Truth. This is the kind of faith. And this is what I'm speaking to you tonight. You can't see your healing because you can't see faith. What does that mean? Because faith um, isn't something that you see. Mm -mm. What I'm talking about is the kind of faith that you see that you know you have. Seeing means believing. Believing that I have this kind of faith tonight. That I'm not going to suffer this sickness. I'm not going to suffer this numbness. I am healed from fear. Fear does not dictate my life anymore. I've taken myself out of the center. I'm not going to be so um, self um, What is it? selfishness. I'm not going to be so self-centeredness. Moving me out of the center. Come on, Lydia. And I'm receiving God back into my heart. I'm receiving him back into my life. And as I go through this soul surgery and I detox my soul, his spirit will become greater and greater in me because I will allow him to move and have his being in me. And I will not allow fear to contradict the fact that a greater, higher power lives in me. Your healing is being held up because of your faith. Now, now let me help you here. Because I don't want to make it go religious. We're not going to do that. Your faith isn't pleasing God. And that's why you're not receiving your healing. You have to have not the faith. Ugh, I got to sit up. It's getting too real to me right now. I don't want you to have faith. To be healed. That's not what I'm saying tonight. I want you to have faith that pleases God so that God will heal you. Don't have enough faith that I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I believe. No, that's not the kind of faith I'm talking about tonight. What I, The faith I want you to have is the faith that pleases God. Faith is without fear. Faith is without fear. Come on. Faith is without fear. Faith is without fear. Hey, Nicholas. Come on, somebody put it on the screen for me. That's right, Delia. Come on, there we go. Come on, Maria. Faith is without fear. That's what I want you to have. I want you to get rid of fear, step one. I want you to invite faith in, step two. I want you to ask God, is this faith pleasing to him? Step three. And step four will be done by itself. Healing. Do not have a faith that causes healing. Have a faith that pleases God and your healing will be automatic. An automatic deposit in your soul bank account. Did I not say it when we started up tonight? See, we're working too hard to have the faith to heal and the faith to just have the kind of faith that pleases God. What kind of faith is that? Without fear. And allow this faith in your life. Every single day or every moment that you're doubting, every moment that you're being tempted, ask God, is this a faith that's pleasing to you? That's step three. God, is this a faith that's pleasing to you or whoever you believe in? I already gave you an option. Every, every, every day you have an option. If you don't believe and you'd like to hear more about my faith, inbox me. Let's video conference together. and Let's work this thing out together. Line upon line, precept upon precept. 
And you don't have to have any Jesus ear fresheners or Jesus scarves or anything. I'm talking about kingdom principles to apply to your life. Faith without fear. That's the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith automatically gives you healing. I never prayed. Once I got the revelation about migraines, I never prayed about my migraines anymore. I asked God daily, is this faith pleasing to you? And when you find out it's not and what you need to do or it is, your healing comes by a faith that pleases God. Am I making sense to anyone tonight? You go ahead, Sharita. Reach down and put your hand on your leg and foot. You want faith without fear. That's what you want. Yes, and ask him every single day when you open your eyes. I want the God kind of faith. I want the kind of faith that's pleasing to God. Thank you. Okay, somebody say I'm making sense. Come on. And when you have this faith that's not centered on faith for the job, faith for the rent, faith for the relationship, faith for the healing, faith for the journey, faith for um, my bank account to be um, back up from negative, faith for the credit report, faith to drive on the highway, faith to speak in public, faith to call a friend, faith to apologize. You don't have to have faith in 99 different areas of your life. You want to have faith without fear. That's the kind of faith that is pleasing to God. And to ask him every day, is this a faith that pleases you? And right after that, healing is automatic in your bank account. See, we're too religious and too deep. That's our problem. We think we need faith in 99. There's one faith. One faith. And the one faith is the one that pleases God. When he is pleased with your faith, you are healed. Let me move on. Where are we at? Y'all tired of me yet? That's when God can do what only he can do. Y'all going to need replay. Because a few people still ask me for the steps. Go on the replay. Catch it on the replay. I'm getting this hot off the press tonight. Metro North. God wants to deliver you from your worst fear. From your worst fear. And that's going to be your greatest potential. That's going to be your greatest healing. And I'm talking about this faith that pleases him. Where things are going to evaporate in your life. Reports are going to change in your life. Things are going to be disappeared. Things are going to be gone. At the same time. When, you're, when your fear is removed from your life, listen, it's going to be an everyday battle. I'm not telling you to run around 10 times and it's going to be gone. That's not going to happen, baby. Why? Because you have to live every day as an earthen vessel. You have to live the traumas of life, the losses of life, the gains of life, the issues of life, the turbulence of life, the rejection of life. You're going to have to, you're going to be rejected. <laughs> it's just, it's, it, rejection doesn't have an age on it. You will be rejected. But guess what? When your soul is right, you can handle it because you're healed. Come on, Tammy. Natalia said the numbness is gone. Come on, Natalia. The numbness is gone. I need the faith that pleases God. And when I have that one kind of faith, the faith that pleases God, I am healed. Period. End of story. And if you still feel it, mind, I know the soul is never going to get this. But I'm letting you know that I am the gatekeeper. And I am healed. Thank you, Chevelle. And I'm talking about evaporation, disappearance, gone, reports change. At the same time, virtually at the same time, you release your fears. Your healing has already begun. Each day you're going to get stronger. You're going to have more energy. Come on, who am I talking to? You're going to have more energy. Your, head, your headaches or your body aches may dissipate or they may go immediately. What does that depend on? It depends on how quickly you get the soul work. That's right. Come on. Preach, earthly. Rejection does not have an age on it. Absolutely. 
You don't need faith for 99 things. You just need one faith. And that's the faith that heals. Reports change. Come on, y'all with me tonight. I'm talking about more energy in your body. I'm talking about fewer aches until there's completely no aches. Less pain in your day until there's no pain. Because some of y'all are going to play with this thing immediately. Do not accept any other report, even from your invisible enemy. And we know who that is. I'm talking about stronger habits centered around your pursuit after God in every corner of your life. See, some of us are trying to get to God, but we got too many things in the way. And I'm not going to go down that list tonight. I'm going to have to really be in another prayed up position higher than this one to tackle that because a lot of us have too many things in the way of our pursuit of a relationship with God and God knows what some of those are people are going to tell you it's crazy <laughs> I'm talking about stronger habits I'm talking about a pursuit after God that is relentless and endless like that testimony I read tonight in every corner of your life I'm talking about you maintaining that lifestyle of pursuing him constantly. Please, for those that are on here that don't believe it or are not interested, don't go away. Let us have our moment. This is just our moment. And we invite you in. Just watch at the gate. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to cost you anything. Pursuing him constantly. And then the fear that used to consume you, it will now be faith consuming you. You are going to be so consumed with your faith, your faith, that it's going to positively overflow into every area of your life. Are y'all with me? I hope you're receiving this tonight. You may not have had many cliches to write in your book or many one-liners, but you've got enough of those. You've got like two or three every single night for 20 days. Tonight, this is a power packed night. Tonight is a night of delegation of healing, delegation of authority, delegation of my overflow, dedication of my obedience to him. Tonight is the night of the overflow that I believe you can feel right now where you're sitting at. Your best seat in the house has just become his best seat in your house. Right now, he's moving on you. Just let them move. You don't have to do anything. This is where your turning point is going to be. And we're just about done. Your turning point is going to be when you are able to uncover what you are most afraid of happening in your life. Some of y'all have already written it up on the screen. Maybe you have. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you need to go a little bit deeper. A little bit deeper. Say a little bit deeper. You may need to go a little bit deeper. Why? Because there's something deeper than what you're able to think at the top of your head. When you face that greatest fear, it reveals what you value the most. For one person, they had talked about being there for their family. That was the biggest fear that they had, for not being there with their family. And they had to come to the realization that I'm going to have to trust you with my family because my family is what I value the most. And I cannot value anything more than I value my relationship with you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous about going in this one direction. And it's not that I'm nervous for me, but I'm nervous for you. Um, that you will not be able to understand that your relationship has got to grow bigger than your church. Your relationship with God has got to be bigger than your relationship with your church. You have to have a relationship that when you bring it into the church, it amplifies what's already going on in the church. You're going to face your greatest fear. This week, this week, you're going to face your greatest fear. You may have to face it by having it, uh, um, if not literally repeat in your life again, it may show up in a familiar way. And you're going to say, oh, that was it right there. This is why I fear losing my family because I, I've lost this all my life. I lost this, I lost this, I suffered losses all my life. Get that greatest fear, confessed, admit it. And move back into the place where you need to be. 
that's when your healing is going to come. So what's hindering your healing? What's hindering your healing? You don't have the faith without the fear. Drop the mic moment. One faith. There's one faith and it's the faith that pleases God. And if you don't know if you are or where that is, ask him. Talk to him. These are the things we're going to be doing at the conference. That's what I'm working now and having a relationship with God. And I'm telling everyone on here, from the, from the purest place of my heart, I tell you the truth. This was not my intent. My intent was to teach revelation, information, in hopes that you would grab it and apply it to your life. Because it works just like that. But you know it's hard to keep quiet when you know that information needs revelation. But it brings transformation when it's encapsulated by the Holy Spirit of God. So I intended to bring you information. I intended to bring you revelation. But what's on my life is going to come out if it takes 20 days. It's going to come out of my life. So we went from information to revelation to tonight. Transfiguration. My, my, my. My, my, my. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but I don't think I'm going to be asleep for a little while tonight. I think I'm going to be up writing a whole lot more for tomorrow's broadcast. That's right. Information has revelation, but there's no transformation. You are receiving the transformation. And that's why y'all know you can't get off. That's why you keep telling people about it. That's why you know something's going on that you can't even see or explain. That's why some of us are losing weight that we can't explain. That's why some of us are sleeping better. Or some of us are not able to sleep until we deal with the issues of our soul. Then we will have heaven's rest and not be in heaven but still be alive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Elder Denise. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm done. I'm not going to keep you any longer. It's nine minutes after. I love you all. I, I'm so inspired by your dedication and your commitment. There's no way that even being tired could keep me from coming on here tonight. So I want you to know that I pray for you, that I mention your name when I go into my prayers and I look for your testimonies and I'm just really... I'm seeing the best that's going to happen in your life. And it's already started now. Tomorrow, we're going to start toxic influences. Toxic influences. And we're going to start with mood poisoning. Mood poisoning. You're welcome, Maria. Mood poisoning. Are we ready to deal with our moods? And it's a good place to go after fear because if I can get your mood straight after being receiving your healing tonight, you'll be all right. Awesome notes, good. That's what I want because sometimes I get into these. You know, I've I've read and I studied, and tonight we were eating dinner just forty five minutes before I had to get on here. I rushed into my room here at um, at eight forty, and I just wanted to refresh my mind with the notes, and it was just such a flow with it. I knew that tonight. There was going to be a, a transformation and a transfiguration right through these airwaves tonight. You will never be the same. This online church is on fire. I don't know about y'all, but my God, you've upgraded my life. You've added to my life. So tomorrow we're dealing with toxic influences and we are dealing with mood poisoning. I love you all. Grace and peace. Watch the replay. Let me see your posts, your notes, your inboxes on what you got out of it so I can make sure that you're not just getting hyped up on emotion, that your soul is really being dealt with. Because remember, that's the seat of your affections, of your will, your desires, your appetite. Come, 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 come. We have work to do. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I love you all as just pure human beings. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. We'll continue to pray healing for you, Elder Duhart, and all you wonderful people to send in your testimonies. Woo! And all you have to do is go on to um, 
our Wix page. We have a page on uh, Wix, Suzanne Howard. You can put in Suzanne Howard Soul Detox. It should come up. Um, and you can go ahead and start downloading the MP3s and make them yours permanently. Um, of course, all of them were made on Facebook as long as they allow it. They will, um, somebody said replay rocks. They will, um, they're being uploaded as quickly as we can on YouTube. And we are also on iTunes to keep your MP3s. I'm encouraging you of this. Make a habit of this until this becomes easier for you than the old way. So you've learned what you thought was normal. And you live that life thinking that that was normal. And you found out on these 30 days, these 20 days, that what you thought was normal was not normal at all. This is normal. So what you are battling with right now, feeling like you have to go up. The, the, the flow of water instead of flowing with it is because you have been living abnormal and thinking it was normal. But now healing is going to be normal for you. Healthy minds are going to be normal for you. What you speak it shall be will be normal for you. All right. I got to go. Love you all very much. Tomorrow night, 9 o'clock, same time, same station. Good night, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jay Earthly. Thank you, Elder Denise. Lots of notes tonight. Good. <laughs> awesome. Good night, Cherie. Night, Tasha. Oh, I didn't know Beverly Vaughn was on. That's my sister. Nope, it's not normal. Good night. Good night. Love you all.